G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Uh, Going to do some more prop tests today, the ones I promised. So we're comparing the, the HQ5045 bullnose, the GEMFAN5045 bullnose, the DAL5045 bullnose, and just for comparison, we're going to throw in the standard DAL504. Five, no, what is it? 5040, which is slightly less pitch. So I've got the HQ on here at the moment. This is the DAL, looks very, very similar. This is the gem fan, looks a bit different. And here's the standard unbreakable 5x4. So I'm going to try those all out. Now to try and eliminate or reduce as much as possible things like difference in battery voltage, I'm using a Nanotech 5000 milliamp, and this is a high capacity. This is a 65 to 130C, so we shouldn't see too much voltage sag, and that'll give us more consistency between tests. I'm also going to top this back up after each brief test to make sure that everything is as consistent as it can be. Got our watt meter. I'm using a, a uh, RC timer BL20 amp ESC running uh, BL Heli. And I've got an ESC over here because these are an Opto ESC, no Beck in those. So I've got a separate, sorry, a separate Beck here and my little servo tester so we can control the motor RPMs. Going to do several tests. First of all, I'm going to see how much power is required to produce 150 grams of thrust, which is basically hover thrust. Then we're going to open it wide out and see how the total thrust it can produce and how many watts it takes to get that much thrust. Then we'll do some calculations, work out efficiencies. I'm also going to rerun these tests in another review where I'll be using four cells instead of three cells. So we can see what happens when we really start getting some power into these props. Do they hold up or do they depitch or do bad things happen when you run them on four cells? And on the four cell tests, I'll probably use a 30 amp ESC, but I'll try it with a 20, we'll see if the smoke comes out first. Rightio, let's get underway with the first test. That's the HQ5045 bullnose. That's going to be our benchmark prop. Okay, here we go. This is the HQ5045 bullnose. It's sort of like the benchmark standard. We'll start with that. First thing we're going to do is try and get as close to 150 grams as possible of thrust, and then we'll take the power, me the power measuring for that. So we know how many watts is required to sustain a hover, and it's a measure of efficiency. So let's go for that. It can be a bit hard to hit the 150 gram mark sometimes, but we'll see what we can do. Thirty one point eight watts to produce one hundred and fifty grams of thrust. OK, now we're going to go for maximum thrust. We're going to see just how much power we can get on three cells from the HQ5045 bullnose prop. I have to hold this down pretty tight because these produce a fair bit of thrust. Now, one of the problems is that the thrust meter itself, sometimes the tear figure just moves a little bit, but you know, it's not going to it's only going to be a few grams if that. So here we go. One sixty watts, four hundred and twenty-five grams of thrust. Okay, I'll put fifty milliamps back into the battery because that's roughly what we drew, and the voltage is the same as when we started the last test. I now have the DAL five zero four five bullnose. Let's go for the hundred and fifty gram test. See how much power it takes to to produce that much thrust. Thirty-one point seven watts. So here's the DA five zero four five bullnose full power. Let's measure the thrust and the amount of power used to create that thrust. Four sixty-six grams and about one hundred and fifty watts. That's not too bad. Okay, Gemfan five zero four five bullnose. Let's do the one hundred and fifty gram figure. See how many watts it takes. Twenty-eight point two watts. Now the Gem Fan five zero four five ball knows maximum power, maximum thrust. One thirty watts, four hundred and something grams. I have to look at the video to check that out. 
Now the stock standard DAL54 Unbreakables 150 gram test. Thirty six point four watts. And the standard five four unbreakables maximum power, see what we get. Three fifty six and hundred and thirteen. Now the other factor involved in this is weight. Weight's improving proving to be very much important in racing and proximity because it enables your motors to spool up quickly and to slow down quickly. So lighter props will give you a much snappier response. And in that respect, the clear winner is the DAL. It weighs in it, according to my scales, 3.75 grams, which is quite light. By comparison, the gem fan is a whole gram heavier. So it's more efficient, but it is a lot heavier. So if you're going to go for snappiest performance, even though this is going to give you lots of thrust, you probably find the DAL is a better option. The HQ prop, that was 4.25 grams. So again, it is three quarters of a gram, or half a gram, sorry, heavier than the thing. So in order of weight, that's the way they go. Lightest is the DAL, HQ comes in the middle, and then the gem fan is, is a heavy little bugger. So there you go, those are important things. Now, also what I want to look at here is some of the construction. Let's get right up close and personal with these props and see what makes them strong or what makes them weak. Now this is the HQ, and as we know, these things aren't that strong, they will break. And the reason that is, if you look at the hub here, notice how there's, um, it's quite thin at the hub, the blades themselves are not thickened at the hub, they just sort of carry on and bang straight into that hub. And there's quite a sharp, there's not much of a radius in here where the props join the hubs, but hard to get focus on this thing, sorry about that. But you can see there's, um, there's a bit of a fillet there, but it's not a great deal of fillet. And the material, of course, is um, not, not as strong as the DAL material. So structurally, this could be better. Now let's have a look at the DAL. This, this is stronger because it's made of a stronger material. But again, if you look at it, there's not much of a fillet, not much of a radius where the props join the hub. So that is why when these break, they break right here where the prop joins the hub because there's a stress riser. Whenever you have a change of the thickness of a material, you have a stress riser. So you've got this very thin blade joining up to that very thick hub. That's where all the stresses will occur when an impact happens and so they'll break right beside that hub. Now, I found the gem fans to be very, very strong props. Let's have a look at why that might be. Here is the physical design of the gem fans. Now look. You can see a massive thickening of the prop blade as it gets towards the hub and, and quite a wide radius there where the prop blade joins the hub. It's kind of radius very, very significantly uh, front and back. So when you look at that, um, there's a lot of meat there at that area where the hub and the prop join together. So the stress is spread out over a wider area. You don't get the same amount of stress rise occurring. So this prop naturally is a hell of a lot stronger than the other two props. Looking at it though, if we look, see there's the swept tip which gives it its extra efficiency and it's got a lot of blade area so that also contributes to the, the amount of thrust it produces. But you notice as a mould wise it's not so good, the precision of the moulding isn't that good and in fact I think on some of them there's even a sort of one of the moulds I think you get quite a wavy tail end on the, on the prop, you know it's just, but it's adequate for what we're doing here so this makes a pretty good prop for proximity as well. Um, if we want to look at what makes the the unbreakable ones, the little unbreakable ones, so, str so strong. Let's, let's put one of those in frame here. It's a standard 5045. Now look at how thick that prop blade is where it joins the hub. Look how they've really thickened that up around the hub area there. The root of this prop blade is incredibly thick. That's why these things take a licking and keep on going. That's why they don't break because they've really, even on the trailing edge there, see how thick that is? This is a really good design, as is the gem fan, from a structural perspective because they have added material at the point of most stress, which is right where the prop blade joins the hub. That's why these props are almost indestructible and why these other ones here tend to break a whole lot easier. So maybe DAL, maybe what they could do is actually um, follow the gem fan hub design, you know, thicken up that blade where it comes into the hub because at the moment it's just too thin. It's just a massive stress riser. If they thickened up these hubs here, they would make a prop that's not only got kick-ass power, but is also virtually indestructible. Maybe there's a reason they didn't thicken up the hub because, you know, if you make indestructible props, you don't sell that many, do you? Okay, so that's four of the popular mini quad props, five inch props anyway, and I've tested them on three cell. Um, which one would I buy? Well, if I'm racing, I'm gonna buy the DAL. I mean, that just produces the most thrust and it is more efficient than the HQ. So the HQ, that was king of the table, but now I think, you know, They've been usurped by the DAL, and the DAL is tougher than the HQ, but actually not by too much because of that structural hub design. Now, if I want a prop for flying around, banging into trees and enjoying myself without having to keep changing them all the time, it'll be the gem fan. Okay, the DAL 5x4 is super tough, but it's also not very 
efficient. You know, you saw the figures, it's the weakest of all the props in terms of the thrust it produces. So the gem fan is pretty damn good. One thing that the gem fan um, is a little bit weakened is it's got so much blade area that when you're flying, it doesn't, the, your quad won't sink so quickly. You want to dodge under a tree, even if the prop slows down, this is like a wing. There's so much area here. So in proximity, mm, you know, I'll probably take both these props out to fly and I just choose the one on the day depending on what sort of proximity I was flying. If I'm racing, then I'm taking the DAL 5045 ball nose. It's king of the pile at the moment. Now, some of you may have noticed some differences in readings between these tests and other tests, and I'll tell you why that might be. When you're testing props, the, the many factors, there's the air pressure and all sorts of things, can affect the amount of thrust you get. The thicker, the more dense the air, the more thrust you're going to get, the more power will go into the motor because it's operating under a heavy load. So that's why I've retested all of these props here today under exactly, or as close as I can make it to exactly the same conditions. So we're comparing apples with apples. I'd rather do that than do one one day and one another day because even over the period of 24 hours, the air pressure can change significantly. Temperature can change, moisture, a lot of factors that can have a bearing. How much bearing? Well, probably not much, but you know, it's just best to do it the right way. So coming up, I'll be doing another set of reviews. I'll be reviewing these same props with four cells because a lot of people are running four cells now. And props like the standard 50, uh, 5x4, they're very thin and very thin, very sort of flexible props tend to be inefficient at high power levels because they deep pitch. What happens is the blades actually sort of level out and the angle of the blade actually reduces so you get less power and often less efficiency. They become very noisy and they just don't turn the watts into thrust. So we'll look at how these props compare on four cells because it's going to be interesting to see if that effect occurs. Naturally the stronger, thicker props should have less problems there. But again, the bad design or the squared off tips also have a problem with the higher the RPM, the less efficient they are. So it's going to be an interesting test. Also, I've got some six inch props. I've got these 6045, 6045 bullnose. Uh, so I'll be comparing a number of those. Lots of prop tests coming up. And again, I'll test them all on the same day in the same condition so we can get some accurate comparisons. So thank you for watching this. Questions, comments, stick them in the place below the video provided by YouTube and I'll do my best to address and answer them. In the meantime, lots of reviews to do in September. So I'm going to get back to the bench, try and get them rolled out as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching. I'll get back to the bench.